Why are gas prices through the roof? Well, the Biden White House released a three-day supply of crude oil from the American U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and they've also terminated the Keystone XL pipeline that would have provided our country with up to 900,000 barrels of crude oil per day from Canada. President Biden also continues to pursue an aggressive anti-crude oil agenda that includes nixing pipelines, importing crude oil, ditching oil drilling projects, and banning new oil leases on federal lands. Those leases that are left have increased fines. So what happens at the pump? Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time here, we give you more than car reviews and first looks of new vehicles, we give you car smarts because knowledge is power. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell for notifications because you don't want to miss anything. Biden's multiple restrictions on domestic oil production leaves the USA and its economy unnecessarily reliant on foreign governments for our energy needs. Americans should not depend on foreign actors like the Middle East and an OPEC. Their controls over our energy security is not good. Instead, we need to focus on the real challenges facing our country's future. And begging OPEC to boost their crude oil because of skyrocketing gas prices was turned down. No kidding. And this is a problem for drivers, while the U.S. crude oil production is next level stupidity. The decarbonization efforts of the Green New Deal are well underway, whether you like it or not. And as the government is attempting to utilize wind and solar to replace two of the important fossil fuels, coal and natural gas, we've been using this resource for generating electricity continuously for decades without problems. Crude oil is being demonized and the government is taking it to the chopping block. Biden's efforts to eliminate all three fossil fuels, including crude oil, is seldom ever used for electricity generation. Let's have some energy realism. Legislators, policymakers, and some of the media are demonstrating ignorance about crude oil usage. They do not understand the staggering scale of decarbonization and its challenges. Crude oil gets manufactured into oil derivatives for more than 6,000 products and used for transportation fuels, such as heavyweight and long-range aviation like airplanes, merchant ships to bring us products, cruise ships, and the military. It's inconceivable that we would eliminate crude oil just because two of the products manufactured from crude oil are gasoline and diesel fuels, which are used in cars and trucks. EV technology is making progress to replace some of the usage of gasoline, but EVs are not the answer for all drivers. For the first time in 70 years, the U.S. attained crude oil independence. This means we were no longer held hostage by unstable powers of foreign energy suppliers. And under President Trump, America had a very aggressive pro-domestic energy policy that allowed America to not only become energy independent, which politicians have been touting and pushing for for decades, but energy dominant. And for the first time since Harry Truman was president, we had more crude oil exports than imports. This resulting in low gas prices and we were able to refill the petroleum reserves. An abundance of crude oil leads to prosperity while restriction or lack of crude oil leads to economic struggle and poverty. Now Biden has vowed to set the US on a course of having a carbon free electric grid by 2035. But that has virtually nothing to do with crude oil. His mission is to displace coal and natural gas with wind and solar for electricity generation. The government must be oblivious to the consequences of this plan. Under Biden's plan to rid America of crude oil in all of its products, such a plan would be grounding the military, space program, Air Force One, destroy airlines, cruise ships, and merchant ships, as well as eliminate the medical industry that is totally reliant on the products made from petroleum derivatives, which is used to process medications. The elimination of crude oil supply chain to 129 operating refineries in the U.S. would eliminate that manufacturing segment and destroy jobs, careers, and livelihoods of thousands of people. All refining would be done in other countries, which would cost Americans much more money. As environmental, social, and governance factors are pushing on us, the reality is that 
primary usage of crude oil is not to generate electricity, but to manufacture derivatives and fuels, which are ingredients used in literally everything in different economies that are in our lifestyle that we use every day. From the cool looking EV vehicles, electronics, water bottles, clothing, medication, and more, we use crude oil for more than gas and diesel. Instead of pursuing the green electricity policy that will achieve nothing but skyrocketing electricity prices and more inflation, we should consider taking steps that will benefit the American people, such as increasing domestic crude oil production to support the manufacturing of the thousands of products that we support in our lifestyle, our infrastructure, our economy, that will bolster our economy and help everyone. Here's the bottom line. Wind and solar may partially replace coal and natural gas for some electricity needs, but renewables cannot manufacture any of the products derived for crude oil. Now here's something about gas prices. Some say, oh, it's just price gouging and the government's gonna step in and have price controls on gasoline. It's happened in the past and it always leads to even higher prices than we have right now. Which do you want? If you got value from this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have comments, because you always do, put them in the comments down below. I'm happy to open up that conversation so we can all learn something. I'll also be answering questions on social media under all forms at Lauren Fix. If you're still looking for a holiday gift, check out my book, Lauren Fix's Guide to Loving Your Car. There's a lot more information in this book to help all drivers on the road. Don't forget to check out our website, carcoachreports.com. It's in English and in Spanish. And I'm also hosting a podcast called Total Car Score. It's available on all platforms where we go behind the scenes and we talk to some of the auto executives and we find out how the industry ticks. Thank you so much for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.